IT Conductor is the ammo you need to automate, monitor, manage and optimize your SAP performance and operations. This is the overview of the SIT refresh for POS system copy automation. As an overview, the system refresh process involves cloning a system, saving the configuration data and restoring the configuration data after the system has been Refresh so that the business configuration data in the system, connectivity, licenses, etc., can be saved. Let's go over the tool installation. After you download the SIT Refresh tool, simply click on the MSI to install. Follow the default configuration, installation, accepting the license, and the tool will be installed onto your Windows platform, one of the SAP on Windows. App Server box. With admin right, you have installation, launching the tool, you will get the configuration of the export, and we'll talk about the export overview right here. So, to export, first of all, choose the directory where the export import will be uh, stored, preferably on a network so that you can access it and uh, reuse the content. Here we will just, uh, for example, create a directory called ximp on one of the network. Of course, the admin has to have the access to write to it. The next is to select the R3 Trans tool. That is the tool that's going to be used in order to export the table content. Here we navigate to the standard SAP binary in user SAP, SID, SIS, EXE. And again, we'll locate that R3 Trans tool select that. So as you're running this as SID ADM, you should have access to execute this with permission on the SAP system to be refreshed. Next we will select the process of exporting. So the phase of export, we can either select all tables. Of course this depends on your configuration. You can save the configuration. Um, it will also let you store where the configuration is on your network, preferably somewhere shared so that other admins can access to it. As an export overview, as we've covered, uh, the help here covers the export, selecting the R3 Trans 2 as we've done so. The export process itself involves selecting the tables that you want to export and save and restore later on. And once you've done that and saved, you are now ready to start the export. So the tool allows you to run it both in GUI mode as well as later on if you wish there is a command line option as well. So here we are ready to do the export so let's go ahead and press um, some of these tables just for example here let's say you don't want to restore certain tables content configurations you can uncheck them. Yeah, if you hover above the each table there is description about what they are um, in terms of configuration data and once you have uh, unchecked a few maybe you want to do ECC different than BW or certain systems you don't want to restore these tables are generally uh, client equals all that means all the table are exported there are only a couple of tables that are client specific so once we save that, we start, it kicks off R3 Trans. Um, in this example here, it pops up, but uh, in the example that you will run on a download, you will have a processing GUI that's, uh, depending on what tables you have, may take a little while to run to export, anywhere from minutes up to uh, perhaps an hour, depending on the system um, speed. Here we're just looking at Task Manager in order to see the R3 Trans process is um, running. We can navigate also to where the export import directory is. You can see that under that is created subdirectories containing the table data that's being exported. And again, they will keep refreshing until all of them are done. Here's an example. Let's take a look at the export logs. Here you can go down and view the type of things that exported and if there's any errors, etc. Return codes at the bottom and the reason is to why. So that's the export process. Now um, let's take a look. After a while, the export's completed. We'll take a look, just an example here, that configuration for the system was about 300 meg. Here we go to the import. So you have done the clone system. Now you are going to import back the content from the system that we've saved. 
Um, generally speaking, you would bring down SAP if you've done the refresh and system SAP is running, but it has the system data from the other environment that you copy from. You want to stop that. There are tables that are going to be impacted. It may affect the runtime. So after starting that, we will click on the import tables. So what happened here is that when you click import, it's going to use the configuration from the run that we had to export. So you have to have an export to have an import, obviously. And that system is now down, so we save. So again, you can choose from all the tables that were exported from the config and you don't have to import them all but let's say for example we might pick a few that we want to import into the refresh system here you do the check mark and start the import you can see in the process overview in the task manager here the r3 trend should be running importing the data depending on how much data you're importing in it's going to read each table and do an r3 trans uh, import we can take a look at the import logs, for example, just to see the kind of activity it has done. So the target content in the table will be uh, truncated in order for R3 Trans to load in the new data. So that is part of the R3 Trans import. It's going to do that. And uh, so there are data there, and there's a warning that uh, entries were overwritten or imported. And the process continues. So for the number of tables you do, that might take you know anywhere from minutes to hours and the import return code there overview mostly warnings for that means there were table content existing in the target that's going to be truncated before the content will be overwritten from the exported data that you took during the uh, start of the refresh process thank you for watching and that's an overview for more information visit itconductor.com slash blog sit refresh